Hey everybody, Rose Cloud Nine here, and today I'm going to be doing a project I've been wanting to do for a while. I finally um, remembered to go out and buy the paint so I could do it. <coughs> Excuse me, and it is a Games Workshop Warhammer Ogre kit. Now, I don't have a box for them. This is actually how it came when I got them. So I'm just going to explain. This is a bit of a backstory here. Um, years ago, I used to be really into um, uh, medieval knights and stuff like that. And I bought a whole bunch of 72nd scale ones. At the same time, the um, Lord of the Ring movies were coming out. And I'm a huge fan of the books and the movies. And so I always wished that someone would make 72nd scale figures so I could buy and paint them. Well, no one ever made 72nd scale. They're actually bigger than that. Um, and I don't even remember how I found out about them. Um, but anyways, I, I did. And I was on holidays, and I found this book here. It's actually right here. Uh, right. Hold on. It is a white dwarf. And it's actually been read and abused so much, I had to keep it in this uh, duotang here. So here it is. White Dwarf, it's got all these hobbits on the cover here. You can see just poor condition it is. And so this was my first experience with Warhammer and Warhammer 40k. Mostly cared about just all the uh, Lord of the Rings stuff. I didn't care too much about all the, um, the, the other Warhammer things. I thought the Space Marines in here were pretty cool. I've actually built a couple Space Marines since then. You guys saw me build one uh, tank. Um, but in the Warhammer section here, there's these ogres. And I don't know why, but I always thought that they were kind of weird and kind of cool. And so, yeah, you can see them all here. They look pretty mean, pretty fun. So I was in my comic book store, this was a couple months ago, and I happened across this guy right here. And I remember I always liked this guy because he, he had this really cool kind of mace weapon here. Um, and it's it just always really cool. I always liked that. So, like I said, I was in the comic book store just a, uh, a couple months ago. This must have been like October or something like that. And I found this metal one here. He was only 25 bucks, and so I picked him up. I thought, that's pretty cool. He's missing a base, but I thought, heck with that, I can make something you know, into a base, and he can sit on that, since I'm not going to play with him, I just want to actually have a nice figure to paint, and, um, I began to realize, looking at some of the pieces, um, that there's, there's quite a few pieces missing, so, around Christmas, uh, they put him up for sale, and so I bought him, again, so, the reason why this is so cool is because, again, they don't make metal ones anymore. They make them out of resin nowadays. And the metal ones are just so much nicer just because of the weight to them. is really, really cool. And that might sound like a lame excuse, but it's actually pretty awesome. So yeah, here's his uh, body. And here is one of his arms. This is for the alternate option here. It's got this cool hammer in it. It's pretty sweet. And then here's my my favorite double club weapon, really like that. And here's one of his arms, and uh, here it's been cut off by some, I don't know, side cutters or something. Here's his head that I want to use, it's kind of this Attila the Hun head. Looks pretty mean. Um, this is a chest piece. Uh, here's his other arm. This is one that I actually need. Uh, his other head. So, and this is his other belly piece. It's got this cool sword and this spiked shield. And then he's also got this little, um, oh, I think this is supposed to be there. He's also got this little goblin henchman guy here. I can't, I don't remember what they're called. They seem to always change it depending on what, uh, version of the game you're playing. But, uh, yeah, so I was really happy about that, and pretty sad, because I thought I'd have a complete kit. And I thought about just mashing up one of his arms and making it fit, but, I don't know, since this went on sale, I thought, ah, heck, I'll buy it, and then I'll have actually two. So here it is out of resin. I'm only going to build the metal one this time. 
Um, so let me just, there we go. So this is the display or the gaming base, display base, whatever you want to call it. That he's supposed to come with. Here he is at a resin. So there's basically like zero difference between the two. Now I'm looking at the sculpt of him. I'm like, ooh, don't do that, don't do that. Um, yeah, like nothing's different at all. It's pretty cool. Um, so that one chest piece, someone cut off the horns on it here. So he's supposed to have these kind of Conan-like horns. Here's a little goblin guy. And there's that same button with the shield. I don't know, I'm going to call it like a belly button cover or something. <laughs> um, here's his club weapon again. And yeah, here's that nice hammer. Here's another little goblin guy. Here's the other face. I might use this face because it looks like it might be a bit of a better cast, but that might be because it's metal and I can't quite see it. Here's the other arms, and he's got this awesome huge sword with this little goblin trying to help him lift it up as kind of pathetic excuse to help him lift it up. And then he's got his other kind of derpy face over there. That's the other option. Um, so yeah, Citadel has been molding out of resin for a little while now, a couple of years. And it makes me mad because uh, resin is a toxic material. I don't like working with it as much because of how toxic it is when you breathe it in. It's not, you know, it's not like I'm going to be like, eh, don't, don't do anything. It's, it's just, I'm not as fond of it. It's not terrible stuff to work with. But there's absolutely... No warning instructions on here. There is nothing, um, you know, like, 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 look at all this room here. The, you think they could have put a booklet in here on how to work with resin because it's a toxic material? And there, they, you know, there's kids that are buying this stuff that don't know the ins or outs of working with resin. Most people don't know working with resin unless you're into aftermarket pieces or you're into making resin on your own. Then you have seen warning labels somewhere there are no warning labels this is everything in the box it was just this um it just makes me really mad you know it's got like this little warning sign on here it's not suitable for children under 36 months um yeah this box will either contain resin citadel get your head out of the clouds and put proper warning labels on here and proper instructions on how to work with resin that should be your job so that guys like me don't have to do it for you. Anyways, I'm going to be using the white metal one with a couple of the resin parts. And again, yes, we're going to get through and learn how to use and take care and manage resin pieces. It's not that difficult. You just got to know what to do. Um, so for this guy, um, Vallejo made a paint set. And it was this really cool paint set of eight paints. And it came in this box with um, how to paint face instructions. So actually, let me just grab it here. Now, I looked high and low on the internet for the paint, face painting set, and it doesn't exist anymore. They don't make it anymore. So I went and wrote Vallejo, and I said, hey, hey guys, I you can't buy your set anymore, uh, and I, 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 want the, I want the instructions. I just want the instructions so I can go, because I can buy the paints. And they were nice enough to send me these instructions. So I only bought the four for this step here. But, um, yeah, I've really, really wanted to learn how to paint faces and stuff like that. And working with Vallejo. So I bought five paints here. And some of them are different, but mostly they are the same, except for that one. So the first one I'm going to be using is a basic skin tone. This is 815. I have brown sand, 876. I have a burnt red, 814. And black gray, because I didn't have black black. So I thought, ah, oh, heck, black gray will do just as fine. Uh, this is 862. So again, I, don't, I didn't actually get the proper one. This will work just as well. I think it'll actually work a little bit better, because it won't be as dominant. And I bought this sky blue, this is 961, um, because I want my ogre to have this really kind of sickly 
look to him. Uh, and I'm also going to use Mr. Hobby, uh, Mr. Surfacer 2100. Remember I bought this a couple months ago? I tested this out on a little vinyl figure, um, and the stuff worked beautifully, so it's going to work well here with this guy. So what I've got to go do now is clean the parts, and that is just to take an old toothbrush and some soapy water and just scrub them down. And when I'm done, I will be able to start assembly. And the same thing goes with the resin pieces. That should be all that I need right now is, again, just some kind of soap detergent, um, like sunlight, whatever else you want to use, and just brush it in there with a, um, uh, an old toothbrush. Alright guys, so the first thing we need to do is take a look at the tools that we're going to need uh, in order to tackle the metal parts. Now some companies still make their figurines in metal, a lot of them use resin. So, but for those of you who like metal, like I do, uh, I, I just like the weight of it, I think it's kind of more fun. There's nothing right or wrong about what material you use. Um, but you need to have the proper tools. So, as you look around on this kit here, there's quite a bit of flash, there's some little uh, I don't even know what to call them, little nubs that are sticking up there that need to be sanded down. His uh, wrists here need to be sanded down a lot flatter. Um, and there's like this little tag here. This is from when they molded it. So how do you get rid of all this stuff? Well, we're going to need a couple of tools. Now, number one here, you can use these crafting saws. Don't really want to use this on the metal. This is more for resin, so let's put this to the side here. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I can use my hobby cutters, uh... These are for plastic. These are not for metal. Don't don't use these ever, ever on metal. You even have to be careful if you're using really, really tough plastic, like snipping up sprues and things like that. Don't use these on this. This will probably be okay with resin, depending on the grade of resin. Um, the stuff that I have here in resin is quite soft. So I'm going to actually be using some small electrical side cutters. And these are, these are going to be just perfect for, for doing this. So like, Take a look at his hand right there. You just take it. There you go. Done. So it's been cut off like that. I've got a couple files with me here. I've got a rounded file and I have this uh, squared file. I also have a flatter file. It's quite a wide one. I just, I don't know what became of it. It was living happily on my hobby table, but um, obviously flat file found rounded file in the jar with square file and I guess one of them moved out um, so I have to go find it again uh, and uh, this is these are gonna be like the most important tools that you're gonna have when you're working on this stuff because it's just it's a lot of it is prep work and cleaning so you can see it's just gonna be so much inspection and this is where you want to have a good primer in hand um, where did I put my primer? Ah, oh, here it is. You can use stuff like Mr. Surfacer and... Or, Mr. Surfacer. That's this stuff. Um, this is Tamiya Fine Primer. Uh, this is light gray, and I love this stuff. It's really, really nice. You get the fine stuff, especially if you're doing figures, and you just light coats over on like do one light coat, come back after an hour, and you might need to do four or five light coats and you'll have this beautiful build up. I'm not going to use this, I'm going to use uh, this little bottle here. Uh, simply because that's all I think I'm going to need. So these, all these parts need to be cleaned up. Now, uh, moving on here to resin. How to clean up resin don't have to be scared about using and working with resin you just need to have a little bit of knowledge about it and be a little bit prepared so one thing I'm gonna do since I want to test which head is gonna be better I'm gonna cut out the head right now and then I'm gonna in the next video after I get them cleaned so I washed all this stuff and like I said I'm pretty sure my sprue cutters are gonna be able to handle this so let's just take a quick test here yeah nothing to it. So what I want to do is I want to just cut away from it all and let's go here that'll do and keep going this is good okay so now we have his head out now again this is where tool like 
these Tamiya scribing saws really come in handy, but you could also just use your hobby knife or even your um, sprue cutters because now that he's cut off, you can kind of go in and, and you can navigate better of all the little fine um, details like that. And it's just, you know, take your time. Don't need to rush when you're doing stuff like this. So what you want to do is you want to keep all your resin in a pile. Now this isn't the part that's toxic. Now if you're sitting at home chewing on this stuff you're you're going to have a problem. This is where resin becomes the problem is when I have to cut and sand down on it. It's the dust that gets into your lungs. So you might want to have uh, some kind of respirator even just a simple mask when you're working with this stuff. I'm not going to be spreading it around but so I'm just going to saw this off here and you have to keep in mind that uh, resin is soft and prone to snapping if you add if you apply too much pressure on it most likely won't happen but uh, keep that in mind when you're working with it now resin can be sanded down just like regular styrene plastic you just again you just have to be careful and when I work on the rest of the resin pieces and cleaning them I am going to be wearing a respirator I'm gonna have a vacuum cleaner next to me here so that when I'm done working on the surface here I'm just gonna vacuum it all up I'm gonna vacuum my tools because I don't want to breathe that in it stays in your lungs and it's not coming out so for cleaning this up again you can just use regular sanding sticks like this and it sounds quite well um, Again, just beware of the dust. Don't panic about the dust. It's not going to kill you. You know, you just want to be careful is all. You, If you're getting into this as a long-term hobby, you want to take precautions so you don't damage your lungs. It's the same thing, you know, when you're using the spray paint. You use it in a well-ventilated area and you're fine, you know. It's not like if you breathe this in or smell it that's going to kill you or knock you out. Uh, just saying use common sense when you're working with this stuff. So you can see here I've got all these little bits of resin. Just going to toss them out in the trash. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go clean this face up here a little bit. I can see some spots in there that I need to adjust a little more. Uh, kind of can't quite see how he's supposed to be. But anyways, I'm going to go clean this up and uh, then I'm going to show you guys how to use uh, Mr. Surfacer here. And uh, I think the results are going to be awesome. Alright, both faces are cleaned up uh, as much as I can see. And the primer is going to help me see any more imperfections. It's going to help me also establish a nice coat of paint so that my acrylic has a better chance of sticking on it. So again, this is Mr. Hobby, Mr. Surfacer um, 1200 and you just have to shake it up you can even stir it up if you like it is lacquer based and you need to just have this in a ventilated room because um, it is quite potent stuff so I'm just going to use a regular paintbrush here and this stuff is a very nice priming coat that it will work very well on the metal here as well as the resin So. I might even want to do two layers of this. It's quite thin, which I like. Uh, again, I also really like the uh, Tamiya primer. It's a bit costly, um, but it's worth it. It's worth every penny. Don't really like Vallejo as much. It tended for me to dry too quick on my airbrush. So, and you can't thin it down because it's basically pre-thinned. So, and I don't know if there's kind of a retarder that you can add into it. Because I've heard that Tamiya products, like thinners and stuff like that, don't work quite as well with um, Vallejo paints. So, I'm going to have to research that. So I can already see it actually drying on certain parts of him here. And uh, when I leave this alone... And come back to him in about an hour or so 
it's going to do a much nicer job of uh, leveling out. So that's quite nice. I really like that. So again, these ogres are just kind of goofy dinguses, <laughs> but they're just so cool and funny. So uh, that looks. Now that he's gray, yeah, he looks actually identical to the resin one. So for priming this resin stuff, it's exactly the same thing as before. He just, you know, painted on here. So it looks. Oh, I'm really impressed with how the metal, you know, turned out there. I'm not uh, painting this on, you know, quite heavy. It's just a simple, simple coat. And again, if I want to, I can go back on and add a, a heavier second layer after. Well, not heavier, but it will be slightly heavier. So this uh, Citadel resin uh, is very soft. Very, very, very soft. Um, most resin that like I've worked with for various projects and things is quite brittle and strong. This is very soft and brittle. So well, every resin's brittle, but uh, you know you're not going to have too much uh, problem with this stuff. It's quite nice. They they're at least using uh, a good quality on it. It's a shame that they charge you so much because resin guess what guys unless it's a huge thick model it's actually not that expensive stuff um, they don't want you to know that <laughs> they want you to think that resins more valuable than the metal hmm it's kinda weird it's like the this resin is like absorbing it it's really funny Like I said, just going to give it some time, come back to it. I can already see some places that I didn't see before, and I can see them in here. They need to be cleaned up. A little bit on this one needs to be cleaned. Not as much by comparison. And I'm still keeping, so far, it's, you know, hasn't finished leveling yet. So far I'm still keeping on my chainmail detail which is what I really want because I want to paint that up it's gonna be really fun but uh, yeah he looks really good cool so to clean my brush here is really simple I'm just gonna wipe off the excess here a few times and uh, I'm just gonna clean it in some lacquer thinner here And there we go. And there you go. Quite easy. And this Mr. Hobby, I've never been able to try it. I found it by accident. I bought it on a whim. Really, really, really nice stuff. So, let's uh, see what the end result is here. So what I decided to do is to uh, prime <clears throat> basically all the parts just to see what they look like and helps you to see all these little imperfections. Um, one of the problems with working with uh, resin pieces, this is one of the things I'm always telling my brother, he's always coming up to me when he builds these ones and um, something I forgot about are holes and there are tons of little air pockets on these resin pieces and um, they're quite simple to to fix, like there's a nice one right there. Now, the holes occur when they're pouring. There's obviously air that's going to be trapped, and usually um, they put them in a vacuum, and I don't think that um, Games Workshop does, because there's so many holes in it. It just doesn't feel like they have done that. Um, <clears throat> feels more like they've just gone ahead and quickly cast them and then pull out the next ones. But, um, yeah, most companies will have these nice um, machines where they 
get rid of air bubbles. You're always going to run into them no matter what. You can't get rid of them 100%. But um, how do you fill them in? Well, you can use regular putty like this. It's just as simple as that. You just put it on here. And there, I filled in that hole, and that actually looks a lot better than I thought it would. Um, you can also use super glue, but you need to use gel super glue. And the problem with working with gel super glue, or any kind of super glue if you're using it as filler, is there's a dry time and then there's a hardening time. And so you have to get it within that drying time, because once it hardens, it's like rock hard, and you really can't do anything with it without damaging other pieces of the model. Um, it's just way too hard to do. So you have to keep this in time. So I'd say, depending on how big a hole you did, 10 minutes. Oh, hey Perla. How you doing, girl? Oh, what are you supposed to have? You gonna help me? Okay. So, that's just working with resin pieces. For metal, I don't find any holes or anything like that, really. But it's just gonna be the same thing. With the metal stuff, though, I'm going to use super glue if I find anything like that. Mostly with the metal, though, I'm only finding imperfections and things that need to be sanded down, which is a nice reason to prime them, because it allows you to see better all these little errors and things that you need to clean up that you probably wouldn't have noticed until you actually went ahead and primed it. But it's just simply, it's just as simple as just painting this stuff on, having a look over the model, and I can see, oh yeah, this needs to be clean, this needs to be clean, there's a seam line there that I never saw before, um, especially, you know, here. Uh, where, where was it? Yeah, there's a seam line running down his leg here and on the side of his uh, torso. I never saw that before because it was all silver, but now that I put that priming coat on, I can definitely see it all and it's like, ah, that's easier to fix than, you know, doing it later, especially if I had assembled the model earlier and then I've got all these pieces in the way. So it's just going to take me a little bit more time to do that, but that's uh, that's no problem. So, I'm just going to keep uh, looking over every piece, and it's just taking my time, inspecting, and this is the part that's probably going to kill uh, some people, it's just looking over every piece, making sure everything's filled out properly, making sure all the little holes are plugged up, make sure everything's sanded down. That's going to take me quite a while to do. It might seem a little boring, but it's actually kind of fun, so I'm going to go ahead and finish doing all that. Alright, so one problem I have is when I try new things for the first time, uh, sometimes I forget how to to, to show it because I'm practicing and I want to have it, you know, learn how to do it before I show you guys. So what I did here is following the instructions, I used the basic skin tone. This is the 815 and I painted two layers of this on as per the instructions. And then it said to highlight parts and I this isn't like my first time doing this type of thing I've researched this for like several years and I've never really gotten the hang of it you know tried it out with different models so I kinda know more or less what to do it's just I've never you know tried it uh, and got it to work um, so I use the 814 burnt red here and I painted that on um, kind of like you know underneath here this kind of groove in his back and all these other areas that you'd have like this or this you know kind of this skin changing on here so I painted that on and let it dry and then I painted on this uh, basic skin tone again to cover that up but what it would do is because this is thin um, you'd be able to see some of the red coming through what ended up happening is super cool um, the the colors blended in together and um, it made this really beautiful looking reddish skin tone. I really love it. Uh, it's going to make me a bit sad to make him blue. <laughs> but actually there's a picture of a guy here. And it's actually the alternate option. But he has some different parts. You can just see there he's blue. So he looks pretty awesome. So what I think I'm going to do. Like. Because I didn't, I didn't quite think of this, you know, painting it in all the, um, you know, in all these grooves and muscles and stuff in here. By doing that with the red, I got this, you know, red tone 
um, you know, change the skin tone to kind of this more red. So what I think I'm going to do is let this dry, and um, once it's dry thoroughly, I'm going to start over and use the sky blue instead of the red. This is going to give me this blue tinge to his skin that I want. Um, but I've never actually got colors to blend before until now, and it looks incredible. It is really, really cool. And again, blending colors, you just kind of mix them together when they're on the figure. Man, that is really awesome. So what I think I'm going to do is, um, you know, I cleaned up his hand. I can see a little area I forgot right there. i got to clean up that. And then he needs a bit of, you know, a bit more primer in a couple areas. This needs to be ground down flatter. Um, and I think what I'm going to do next, while I'm waiting for this to dry, is to paint this uh, button that goes on his his belly button guard. <laughs> I'm going to paint this. Um, one thing I, I did decide to do that I'm also going to do is I wanted to put some kind of tattoo on him. So I'm going to paint a moon, Celtic knot moon, kind of coming around him like this. And then it would go down his chest like that. I think that would look really cool. That's going to be one of, like, one of the last things that I do. But I, I was looking up Celtic knots and things, and I found this moon, and I just went, oh, that looks super cool. I think I'll do that. So, yeah, that's that's blending. It's crazy awesome. I love it. Huh, I really do. And then next is painting highlights and, and stuff. I'm not quite sure. Like I said, I'm reading these instructions. I'm learning it. I'm figuring it out. It's a lot of trial and error, so for me to say this is what you do and what you don't do, you know, like I can normally do because I've had experience with it before, um, I can't do that here, you know. This, I can only say this is what I have done. So <laughs> it's a bit of a different pace for me, but definitely, man, that looks, that just looks amazing to me. I can't get over that. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to go paint his uh, belly button guard. I'm just going to call it that. I, I don't know. It's kind of like a breastplate, but it's too low. It's on his belly, so it's his belly button guard. <laughs> Anyways, wicked awesome stuff. Alright, before I show you guys what I've done here, I just got to show you what I picked up yesterday. I'm pretty excited about this. This is so cool. <laughs> Check it out. I found this new mug. It's an R2-D2 mug. Pretty awesome. Check this out. Pretty nice decal they stuck on here. Anyways, I'm just totally excited because I found this on the internet like a couple days ago. And they wanted 24 bucks for it and I found this in the store just by accident. And I was like, oh, I think this is a sign. I will take this with me. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, so yeah, here I painted the flesh tone all over again, and I painted the blue on there, instead of the red, if you recall. So now what I'm going to do is the skin tone again. Okay. So it's kind of funny, a lot of people say don't shake acrylic paints. And I'm like, okay, whatever you say. I shake Tammy acrylics all the time. And you're supposed to not shake them because of bubbles. I've never had that happen with Tammy acrylics. But uh, with these Vallejo, man, they, they actually build up bubbles. It's kind of weird. So, this is all I did last time. And I actually had a smaller brush. I'm going to grab that one instead. There we go. Uh, where are you? There you are. Okay. So yeah, this is all I did. I just painted it on. Oh man, that's cool. I know my camera is so lousy by today's standards, it won't quite pick up on this, but definitely getting some 
blue tone in it. That looks pretty cool. It actually looks kind of like veins in some of the areas where it's like a bit too thin. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. It's you know, before I had the the red in there, I might go through a bit more of the red in. But it's kind of yeah, it's weird. It's kind of Yeah, it's kind of pale and greeny. Ugh. <laughs> this guy's pretty sick. Or something. Maybe it's just ogre skin tone. And add some blue in here. And just. Oh man, that's even better. Just yeah, a bit of that. So this this Vallejo stuff is kind of like um. It's 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 kind of like uh, oil paints. Which is cool, cause if I tell my dad that, <laughs> he'll be so happy. He'll be like, "Oil paints? I know those." Oh yeah, there. That's even better. Oh, there. I can see it way better now. It's kind of two contrasts here. You can see this more of a greeny color. Oh man, I love it. That looks terrific. Oh, that's a little too blue. That's actually okay. So I think what I'm going to do is just add more skin tone. And I'm just going to sit around here I think and I'm just going to play with this color for a while, because I'm really liking this. I'm really liking this tone, but I want more, more skin tone in here. But I'm definitely, definitely getting the color I was imagining. So I'm gonna go continue messing around with this till I get it 